Good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you this Monday from cloudy San Antonio, Texas. The second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. Hope you guys are fired up and ready for a fantastic Monday. You know, I truly enjoy pushing the edge of every boundary in my life. You know, you never know how far you can go until you go a little too far. So I would like to begin this morning and this conversation with, do you make your wife look bad? Do you make your husband look bad? And you'll see where I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm going to begin with a story and I'm just going to ask you, do not turn the video off until you hear the end of the joke. Because I know you're going to get upset when you hear the joke until you hear the end of the joke. So it was Garden of Eden time and God had created Adam and they were having a conversation and Adam was just lonely. So God says to Adam, you know what, buddy? You go to sleep, have a great night's rest. And when you wake up in the morning, I got a surprise for you. Adam says, cool, sounds great. Adam goes into a deep sleep. God has a McRib. The next morning, Adam wakes up, and there is beautiful Eve laying on the ground next to him, buck naked. Adam wakes up and says, whoa, whoa. God says, hey, shh, shh, hold on a second. Listen up. Here's what I want you to do. Spend the day with her, and then in the cool of the evening, I'll come, and we'll talk about your experience with Eve. He says, okay, you got it. Exciting. So Adam gets up proceeds to spend the entire day with Eve. They come back to the garden that evening. Eve falls asleep. God wakes up Adam. Hey, Adam says, whoa. He says, uh, come on, let's talk about your day, Adam. And he goes, great. I'm so excited to talk about. So God says, so what did you think, Adam? And Adam goes, she's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And God says, well, tell me specifically what you're thinking and feeling about Eve. And he said, well, God, here's the thing. I want to know. Got a few questions. God says, okay, go. Why did you make her hair so long compared to mine? And God says, well, Adam, I did that so you would like her. Didn't you like that? I mean, don't you like that? And Adam says, I really like it. And he goes, cool. I'm glad you like that. Anything else? He goes, why did you make her lips so big and red and her eyelashes so, so long? And God says, that's easy, man so that you would like her. Didn't you like that? And he says, I love it. What else you got, Adam? He goes, uh, notice you made her real curvy. Woo! Our God says, yeah, buddy. I made her that way so you would like her. And Adam says, well, you did a phenomenal job, God. Not only like her, love her. You hit it out of the park. And God goes, was well, there anything else? And Adam goes, no. No, uh, and that's cool. God says, come on, Adam. I know you want to ask me something. And he says, I, I don't want to offend you, Lord. I don't want to offend you. You can't offend me, Adam. I created you. Tell me. He goes, well, I mean, I know you did all these things for me so that I would like her and I love them. But I, I'm just wondering one thing about Eve. And I don't want to offend you, God. And God says, you will not offend me, Adam, please. He goes, I want to know. Why did you make her so dumb? Dumb! And God says, <laughs> that's easy, son. <laughs> so that she'd like you. Woo! I told you you were going to get offended for a minute before I spun that around. So she'd like you. Okay, women are not dumb. They're extremely intelligent. You get my point, too. You make your husband or wife look bad, and where am I going with that this morning? If you are in a marriage relationship or a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship that is serious, your lifestyle when you are apart from your spouse or significant other is a direct reflection of your honor or dishonor, value or lack of value of them. End of story, period. That's the way that it is. Man, do your friends see you flirting with other girls when you're not around her? Do they see you with that roving eye with other girls when you're not around her? Do they see you playing the game with other girls on the internet? Well, guess what? You are dishonoring your bride. You are dishonoring your woman. 
It is a dishonor to her. Bride, are you out bitching about your husband to your girlfriends? About how he ain't this and he ain't that? Sorry, Ziggler's, I meant, I meant to say complaining. Complaining about your husband? About he ain't this and he ain't that? So that y'all can be like, yeah, he ain't. Eh, he ain't like that. He's this and that. You are dishonoring your husband by your words and your behavior. Do you make your husband look bad? Do you make your wife look bad? This happens when you are apart from them, not only with them. And I do not say this so that anybody will get offended. I say it to activate an awareness of revelation that the light will go off. Do you know, I heard a man one time say, you know, you guys that are like, my wife is so stupid. She just idiotic. That girl, she don't know how to do nothing. You know, my wife is a freaking idiot. If she would just get her grab to get, my wife is just, just stupid, man. She does stupidest stuff. Hey, dude. Do you know it's that very stupidity you're accusing her of that kept her from getting a better man than you? You should say something like, my wife is brilliant. She's the most intelligent, passionate, amazing, thoughtful woman I've ever met. She is the wisest female I have ever met in my life. When you call your wife stupid, you are putting a charge against yourself because that stupidity kept her from getting somebody better than you, sucker. Think about it. Just think about it for a second what you say, how you live, apart from your spouse determines whether or not you make them look bad and whether or not you honor or dishonor them. And why am I having this conversation? Because this conversation is not about husband and wife. I'm going to twist it for you right here. Do you know that God calls people who call on his name in the name of Jesus, the bride of Christ? So I have a question for you, faith-filled believer. Do you make your husband look bad? If we are the bride of Christ, do you make your husband look bad? When you are out in the marketplace, do you make him look good? What does your behavior and your speech and your attitude and your lifestyle reflect? Because see, when you associate yourself with him, just as a wife or a husband associates themselves with their spouse, what they do and what they say when they are apart from them is a reflection of whether they truly honor or dishonor him or her. So I just have this question for you, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a believer and you call yourself a believer, there's a reason why the good Lord loved on everybody that was crazy and was slamming the church folks because they were making idiots of themselves, judging, being holier than thou, being self-righteous and just the garden variety idiocy of foolishness thinking they were something when they were not do you call yourself a believer but you judge people do you call yourself a person of faith but you tear people down do you call yourself a person of faith but you are unforgiving unloving harsh bitter cruel and unkind you're making your husband look bad do you want to continue that? Please don't. Please don't. You know why? Because he's faithful. He's loving. He's loyal. He's kind. He's good. He's merciful. He's gentle. He's all that. And the case of chips, ladies and gentlemen, do you make your husband look good? If you are one who calls on the name of Jesus, we are called in the Bible, the bride of Christ. And I just have a question for you. Is your intention today to make your husband look good or to make him look bad? What you say and do today Will make the difference. Gabrielle, you look like you want to say something. She looks a little. This is Ella here, no, right I'm here. Saying, Ella, you're saying it more on like your husband, but what about your wife? Ah, well, he doesn't also, call us the saying, wife of Christ. So also, you were saying you were like, this is really well, good. You're like, well, it's about he's to go loyal. down. He's this. He's this. He's this. What if he's not? Yes. Well, no, I'm talking about Jesus. Did you miss that last part? Yes, I, I said, yeah, you're Jesus. Oh, she missed that part, I was see? Like, but I love the fire that my little girl brings because she brings this into the conversation. So let me be clear. I was talking about Jesus, your husband. Are you making your husband? Because see that whole thing of the husband and wife thing, do you make your husband and wife look bad? Is because I was saying if people call themselves a believer, then the Bible calls us the bride of Christ, male or female. I don't understand that. I just know that's what he calls it. And it's my intention to make my husband look good. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. So I know she was giving me some really good nuggets because she thought I was talking about husbands and wives. So here's what I have to say. Husbands, honor your wife. Love her. Be kind. Be good to her. She put a ring on your finger. She, she's committed to you. And trust me, the challenge that we all have is 
learning how to remain honorable when we are familiar. Familiarity does indeed breed contempt. Familiarity puts us in a position where sometimes we forget this precious person that we chose and made a covenant with years ago. Go back to the reason why you chose them in the first place. Go back to the reason why you chose them in the first place. You will find that if you treat them the way you did in the beginning, you will have the passion you had in the beginning. Hope you all have a great day today.